I'm so happy to be with you guys, and I'm so excited. I love to be in God's house. There's no greater place to be. And if it's your first time here, man, we are so honored that you came to worship with us. And one thing here, you're going to get encouraged. By the time you leave here, you're going to be encouraged. Um, maybe you're facing a trial. A How many are facing a problem right now? You're just facing a problem. You just can't figure out. Here's good news. Jesus has it all figured out. He's going to get you through that problem. He's going to take you to the other side. I promise if you just give everything to God. So if you can, I want you to turn to James chapter 1. Um, we are in a series going through James verse by verse. Um, if you look at James, if you haven't been here for a few weeks, James chapter 1, it starts off um, even in verse 2. When troubles come your way, consider the great time of great joy. This is when your faith is being tested. Pastor Marco went over how do you overcome a trial? How do you get through a tough time? We talked about that a few weeks. And then last week um, I spoke on wisdom. How many this week you've been asking for wisdom? How many has been receiving wisdom? I love it. I was talking to somebody during our welcome moment. They said, man, we went, we went to our, our power of 12 and they've been studying the wisdom and people are getting divine understanding and knowledge. I don't know about you, I need wisdom from God every day. How to raise my kids, how to, how to have a great marriage and how to help Pastor Marco just um, co-pastor this church and different decisions that we're making. We need God. How many need God? Now I want to get your attention if you can. Go to verse 9. Go to verse 9. Now James um, is the half-brother of Jesus. Imagine being raised with Jesus, his brother. A brother that never did any wrong. That must have been a nightmare for James a little bit. Why can't you be like your older, why can't you be like your brother Jesus? He don't make it, why don't you just be like Jesus? And this is James. This is the, the author who wrote the book. He's a half-brother. We say half-brother because Jesus, again, was conceived by the Holy Spirit. So James now, starting at verse 9, he really kind of just switches the subject altogether, kind of. But he kind of introduces us to a test. He, 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 now he's going to describe a little bit about money. A poor man and a rich man. Look at verse 9. Now we're going to do a kind of a comparison of a rich and poor man. And really something that the poor man and rich man, they could have this in common. Look at James chapter 1 verse 9. Believers who are poor have something to boast about. What? Believers who are poor have someone to, something to boast about. For God has honored them. That seems like an oxymoron. Believers who are poor, they have something to boast. And this word poor means they're in lack, they're in need, they don't have that much possessions, they don't have that much money, they're poor, for God has honored them. You know why it says God has honored them? Because God is close to the broken. He's close to those that are hurting. He's close to those that are in need. And how many know that God is our source? I don't, want to, I don't want to mess up the title, but I'm going to give it to you in a second. Verse 10. And those who are rich should boast that God has humbled them. Now he goes, a poor man is, is honored by God. God is with him. And a, a poor person knows that he needs Jesus. He needs, he needs God for things that he needs. Then a rich person should boast because God has humbled them. How many know that all of us could be humbled at one point of our life? How many has ever been humbled? It hurts, doesn't it? So a person that has a lot, we got to be careful because we could be humbled. And a rich person and a poor person, they both go through trials. How many know the rich and the poor, everybody alike, they're going through issues. It might be different from you, but every person is going through issues. So a rich person should boast that God has humbled them. They will fade away like a flower in the field. The hot sun rises and the grass withers. The little flower droops and falls, and its beauty fades away. In the same way, the rich will fade away with all of their achievements. Now, a little background to the scripture. The Jewish Christians right now, they're beginning to start churches. They're evangelizing. But the Jewish Christians in this time, a lot of them were poor because they left everything to follow Jesus. They were being persecuted, but 
there were a few people that were very influential. There was a group of people that had money. I want you to write this down. And this is where we're going to stay here for, for maybe 15, 20 minutes. Write this down. The poor and the rich have this in common. They could both forget who their source is. A rich person and a poor person, they could forget who their source is. So here's the title for today. Don't forget who your source is. Don't forget your source. If you're a rich man, you have plenty. Don't forget who gave you your finances. Don't forget who gave you that job. Don't forget who gave you the ability to make money. See, a rich man and a poor man, they could have this in common. A poor person, they could say this. A poor person, they don't have much. They could say this. Where is God? I'm trying to pay my bills. I'm in lack. Where is God? They're forgetting who their source is. I'm getting evicted. I'm losing my job. My business is, is going bankrupt. They're laying off people. A poor man could forget who he or she's source is. Well, a rich person, they could say this. I don't need God. I got this. I'm making my money. I'm doing my thing. I started my business. I got this. The rich person, that's a very dangerous statement to make. Because the Bible says this in Proverbs 30, verse 9. For if I grow rich, I may deny you and say, who is the Lord? See, the rich people, there's some rich, they don't realize that their wealth could be gone in a second. How do I know that? Proverbs 23, 5. In the blink of an eye, wealth disappears. For it will sprout wings and fly away like an eagle. See, the rich and the poor, they can fall in this category. They forget who their source is. I want you to write this down. Point number one. God is your source for everything you need. Can I get an amen? Look at your neighbor and tell them, God is my source. God is your source of everything you need. Psalm 68, 26. Praise God, all you people of Israel. Praise the Lord, the source of Israel's life. 1 Corinthians 8, 6 says this. Yet for us, there is but one God, the Father, who is the source of all things. Who is the source of all things? Who is the source for all things? God. Now, what is source? What does that word mean, source? Let me give you the definition. It means this. A supplier of something that we cannot produce on our own. It's the stream that provides. It's the origin of provision. One of God's names, he is Jehovah Jireh, the God that provides. God is our source. He's the supplier of things that we can't produce. What are things we can't produce? We can't produce love because God is love. He's a source of love. We, we try to maybe produce joy. Maybe we'll pop on a comedy show and try to laugh for an hour. But the only one that can give you unspeakable joy and full of glory, his name is Jesus. He is the source of everything we need. This week, man, I got, I got introduced. Uh, I'm just going to, he, he's my new best friend. He's my new best friend. His name is Alec. Him and his family live in Phelan. I got a call this week. Um, the family heard me preach last week. And um, they said, hey, can you come visit our son? Um, they, got, and they got a hold of one of our Power of 12. It's actually Abriana's, Pastor Marco's daughter. Got a hold of her. Hey, can you go to Phelan? I want you to pray for this family. I want you to see Alec for a second. He's, he's just my, he's my new best friend, man. Can I, can I introduce you to my new best friend? Look at Alec a couple years back. Can you show that video of Alec? That's right. That's it. Preach it, Alec. Like, he put it in me. Yeah. So he did put it in me. He put it in me. Yeah. So that's how I got it. I agree on that. That's true. Hello, everyone. His yes. parents said, how'd you get the wisdom? Like, God put it in me. How'd you yeah. get the faith? God, he's there. preaching to his family, Alec. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what color you are. Yeah. I'm not old. 
Are you done over here? Yes, I'm done now. Oh, are you done? I am what? He's switching to you now. He said, now you preach. Go ahead, you preach. You preach. You cut it off. This was a couple of years ago, and I get this call that he's sick now. Now, they showed me this video, and they might be watching Alec and Ephraim. I asked if I could share this video. I asked, we're going we're gonna to pray for Alec right now. So when I got to Alec's house, this is not what I saw. When I walk into their home, this is who I saw. Can you show my new best friend? That's my boy. That's who I walked into the house. They had him in front of the TV. And I began to ask questions. I said, I said, Teresa, was he born this way? Because, again, I didn't see that video of him preaching. He goes, no, 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 no. He wasn't born this way. He goes, let me show you a video two years ago. This was my boy completely healthy, com nothing wrong with him, nothing at all. Energetic, you name it, a normal five, I think it was five or six in that video, normal five or six-year-old. I said, what has happened, Teresa? He said, well, they diagnosed him with um, ALD. I'm not a doctor, and I'm trying to be a doctor. I look it up. I try to look it up. A long story short, it's, it's a brain disease. It's a brain disease that only really affects boys at that age, from about 5 to 8, 5 to 10, those who get infected with ALD. One in about 25, 30,000 kids, boys, they get ALD. Now, motor skills have completely shut down. He can't walk, he can't talk, he can't do anything. When I went over there and I seen Alec, I'm sitting there, I said, Lord, what do I tell this family? How did, how did they get through this tough time? He said, Rob, you got to share. I'm their source of peace right now. I'm going to be their source of strength right now. I'm going to be their source of healing right now. If you need restoration and strength, God is your source. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10. In his kindness, God has called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. So after you have suffered a little while, he will restore you. He will support you. He will strengthen you. If you need a healing, the Bible says in Isaiah 53, 5, by his stripes, we are healed. Who is our source? You need joy. Psalms 43, 4. There I will go to the altar of God. To God, the source of all my joy. Maybe you need peace today. Maybe you need comfort today. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 1, 3. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is all merciful. Father and the source of all comfort. Whatever you need, God is your source. I want you to put that picture of Alec in the wheelchair. I don't know if they're watching nine or if they're watching now. Can you stretch your hands for it? I promised Teresa and Ephraim that we're going to pray for Alec today. Start to pray for a healing. Start to pray for strength. Start to pray for comfort for the mom. Her name is Teresa. The dad's name is Ephraim. Start to pray strength for them. Lord, we, we, we thank you for strength. Ephraim, if you're watching right now, and if you're watching Teresa, we got a whole congregation, thousands of people praying for you right now. We love you. God loves you. We support you. God is with you. God is a source of your strength. God is a source of your comfort. God is a source of your peace. Lord, I thank you for peace and comfort for this family. And I thank you, Lord, for your will right now is to heal Alec. You can take him out of that wheelchair and you can heal him of ALD because you're the same God yesterday, today, and forever. For by your stripes, we are healed. Now give God the biggest shout of praise for touching Alec's family. Come on, give Jesus a shout of praise. God, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know the struggle you're facing. But God is the source of everything you need. I remember starting off the, starting off the church and... Man, you talk about our faith being tested. You know, we, we, we started the church, me and Pastor Marco and a, a group of leaders. And we had a lot of, um, a lot of homeless people back then would come. And um, just people, kind of like the scripture, just real poor. They didn't have too many possessions. So the finances were there, but they were not there. I was like, oh, what are we going to do here? And I remember we were there and somebody said, hey, you can get a grant. 
everything, and there's nothing wrong with grants. There's a season for grants. But we were just starting off. And someone said, hey, you can get a grant for everything you're doing, and they'll pay for everything you're doing. And me, me and Pastor Mark said, well, that sounds like a good idea. They'll cover the food. Yeah, they'll pay for the food. They'll buy this. I said, well, let's do this thing. Where do we sign up? So we were there. We were getting ready for our first grant. And it was the following day. I was pumped up that night. I said, oh, man, we're about to get some money for the church. Yeah, we can help so many people. We can help so many people. That night, the Holy Spirit told Pastor Marco, he goes, slow down a minute. Who is your source? Is the government your source or am I your source? So that morning, I was all dressed up, had my little, my little shirt and tie on, getting ready to speak to a grant writer. Pastor Marco called me early in the morning. He goes, hey, cancel the meeting. Right? Again, there's nothing wrong with grants. But in this season of our church, it was new. God was trying to define the church. Either we're going to focus on God and let him be the source of everything or run to chase money. So we, I, I said, it's canceled. I called, hey, it's canceled. So then I called I, Pastor Mark, what are we going to do now? He said, God is our source. I said, okay, he better show up fast. We don't got no money. Let me tell you why, too, because I, me, me and Veronica, we were the first ones to quit our jobs. There was no money coming in. I said, Mario, I got to take care of my, we got to get paid something. So I'm like, well, what's going to happen? He goes, God's going to provide. Man, well, it wasn't another week, two weeks, three weeks, whatever it was. I, and you've heard the story, I'm going to say it again. Some lady comes to a Bible study. It was a women's Bible study. And, and we're, the, the ladies are there, Veronica Lee says, like four or five ladies, real small, just We'll Bible study. So they had a guest speaker that day. And Lisa told Pastor Mark, well, what do you want to give the guest speaker? He said, we don't got no money. Remember, we said no to the grant, but God's going to provide. So he goes, Lisa, just take up an offering, just give it to the speaker. So they take an offering, a couple ladies there, maybe five or six ladies, whatever it was. And like, I think it was like $10,000 came in. Now, either... Somebody had money in that group or so? Or that's a fake check. We said, go, go cash it. See if it cashes. We looked up on the name on the check. We go, we go through our roster. Nowhere in sight this lady's name. We cast a check. Well, the lady, we gave, it to, we gave the lady the 10000 the speaker. She kept, it went through. It was a miracle. And I, I. At least it's called Pastor Marcus. Someone gave who gave? I, said, I don't know who gave it. Then all of a sudden, a truck pulls up to our church. We're on Fourth and Arrowhead. We need to help. We need to help with cleaning supplies, cutting the grass. I'm telling you, it was tough. A truck pulls up, and somebody gets me. Say, hey, Rob, there's a truck out there with a bunch of sanitary supplies. I said, tell them to send it back. We ain't got no money. What are they? They're at the wrong church. What do they want? They said, no. Somebody paid for the whole truck for you. You just have to unload it. When you rely on God as your source, you will walk in the supernatural. How many want to walk in the supernatural grace and power and favor of God? God has to be your source. I go to the truck. I said, who, who paid for this? He goes, here's the name. Same lady's name. Don't have a clue. The Sunday comes around. I said, well, Lord, keep on going. That day, same lady, she wrote a check for $30,000. We still don't know who this lady is. I said, okay, the 10, maybe the 30K is fake. Go try to cash that one now. We found out who the lady was. She was in her prayer closet one day. Her husband had died, left her some money. She had properties. She sold them all. We didn't know. She had two months to live. She's in her prayer closet. She goes, Lord, I got all this money. What do you want me to do with some of it? She never heard of our church. And the Holy Spirit said, there's a church called the Way World Outreach. I want you to drop it off there. She starts calling, where's the Way World? What, what kind of church is that? See, when we trust in God, he will provide everything you need. 
We're in a season now where we need wisdom and we need the favor of God. In these times we're living now, we will not be able to operate without the supernatural power of God. How do we do that? God has to be our source. Well, look at number two. Here's point number two. What was point number one? Let me see who's taking notes. Let me see. What's point number one? That's about 60% of you. You guys have got it. You almost got it. Point number one again. God is your source of everything you need. Here's point number two. This is dangerous. Anything you put your faith in other than God will disappoint you. If you're putting your faith in anything but God, you will be disappointed. God will make it a point to disappoint you. Why? Because he wants all the glory. He wants all the praise. Anything you put your, God is the only one who won't fail you. God is the only one who won't disappoint you. God is the only one that's faithful 100% of the time. Deuteronomy 31, 8 says this, do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord will personally go ahead of you. How many want the Lord to go ahead of you? You got to get all scared. He will go ahead of you. He will be with you. He will never fail you nor abandon you. God is the only one that's not going to abandon us. God is the only one that's not going to fail us. He, he, he won't fail. He'll be the right through the thick. He'll be the right through the thin. When everybody else leaves, family might leave, friends might leave. Jesus is a close friend. He is right there next to you. He's our source. Give God a big shout of praise. If we put our faith in anything else, we will be disappointed. And be careful to put it on man. Don't let man be your source. Don't run to a person for your source. Resources might come out of a person, but the source is still almighty God, king of kings and lord of lords. Psalms 146 verse 3. Don't look to men for help. Don't put your confidence, don't put all your confidence in people. Their greatest leaders fail. For every man must die. His breathing stops. His life ends. And in a moment, all he planned for himself is ended. But happy is the man who has the God of Jacob as his helper. Happy is the man who has the God of J Jacob as his helper. Whose hope is in the Lord his God. I love this. Verse 6. The God who made both earth and heaven, the seas and everything in them. He is the God who keeps every promise. How many are thankful that God keeps his every promise? But if we try to place our faith, anything other than God, we will be disappointed. Too many times we even have a tendency to put it on ourselves. I'm going to figure this thing out. I'm going to get that fourth and fifth job. I got I to make this happen right now. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with fourth and fifth job, but there is a problem if you're working four or five jobs and you can't be in church. You got to work that extra job, work that extra job. But if it's going to miss church, wait a minute, go. Whoa. I remember when we and Veronica, when we, when we started the church again, we, the church was packed out, four or 500 people, right? God's moving. And I, I told Pastor Marco, one of us have to go full time. There's too many people. We've got, we got to start discipleship classes. He goes, well, go ahead. You go first, Pastor. You are. No. no. That's not how. <laughs> oh, it kind of went that way. No, it didn't go that way. I said, one of us have to go full time. So me and Veronica went. We prayed. And, I, and the Holy Spirit started directing us. We go first. So I called Pastor Mark. I said, Mark, let me talk to you. I said, look, me and Veronica will go first. It just makes a whole lot of sense, okay? We have no kids. You got four kids. We live in a little apartment, condo. You have this big house you made. In, in a, it's just, it just makes more sense. We'll jump out and we'll do it first. We didn't have no money in the church. So Marco said, well, well, whatever comes in, we'll help you guys. We'll pay, we'll pay your bills. And in God, I told you before, God gave me sponsors. He goes, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. If I'm your source, Rob, 
I'll take care of you. So we were barely married. We were newlyweds. So Veronica, she was a little stressed out. No, no. You know why? Because of me. I had a bunch of bills. She was debt free. I had a Yukon payment of 680 on a lease. She had a Chevy Cavalier paid off debt free. So I said, honey, let's bring all the bills to the table. She said, your bills, you put them on the table. No. <laughs> Those are all your debt stuff. I said, no, honey, seriously, let's put the bills on the table. Hey, we're married now. They're both of ours. <laughs> Come on now. Let's put them on the table, sweetie. And we put the bill, I'll never forget, in Redlands, apartment there, a condo, and I, we put the bills on the table. We're crying. And I said, God, I don't know how you're going to meet these needs. We got bills here. I got my car payment. I don't know how you're going to do it. The Lord said, it's okay. I'm your source. And in that time, I've said it before, and I'll tell you, for the ones that haven't heard it, God gave me the word sponsor. I'm like, sponsor, what is that? What is sponsor? After we pray, we're just crying. All the bills, I, just, I said, leave them on the table, honey. They're not ours. God called us to do this. He's going to provide. Within a day or two, that whole time when I quit my job, people started calling me. Hey, I heard you quit your job. Yeah, I did. My cousin called me first. He said, I heard you quit. I said, yeah, I did. He said, I'll sponsor one of your bills. I'll pay for them. I said, come on, Jesus. <laughs> Hour goes by. My uncle calls me. He goes, hey. I got a car you can use. I'll pay for it. Just here, here's a car. Just use it. And you got a car payment now? I'll help you with your car payment. Mama calls me from Florida. My mama, she said, hey, I heard the word sponsor. Me and my dad, dad we're going to help you sponsor. We'll sponsor one of your bills. Within that time in my season of life, all my bills were covered by sponsors. I chose for God to be the source. I'm going to say right now. There's somebody here right now, you are really stressed out. You're working, about, you're working three or four jobs. I just heard the Spirit of the Lord. You're working three or four jobs. You are stressed out right now. I'm going to declare right now that God is your source. You won't have to work those three or four jobs anymore. God will give you one of those two. He'll give you one job that's making just as much money or more than those three or four that you're doing right now. I declare that right now for somebody that's here, somebody that's watching. Our source is not up to me. I'm not the one that has to figure it out. Lord, you're the source. Bless this person right now. It might be a couple people. Bless them in Jesus' name. Give the Lord a big shout of praise. Yeah, yeah. God is our source. But if you put your faith in anything else, we will be disappointed. Here's number three, and I kind of already said it. Point number three, blessed is the person who keeps God as their source. Blessed is the person who keeps God as their source. Jeremiah 17, verse 7. But blessed are those who trust in the Lord. Is it hard to trust in God sometimes? Yes, it's hard sometimes. For the person who doesn't have much, it's like, man, what do I... What, what? How do, how do I figure this out? The rich person, real quick, let me talk to a person that says, maybe you have a lot of money in the bank maybe, and you're saying, I got this handled. Don't forget who your source is. Don't forget. Why well, can't give a tithe? I, I'll work for that money. No, no, no. We, we, no, no we, we got it all wrong. You got that money because God gave you that money. You got that job because God gave you that job. Be careful if you forget your source. Like the Bible said earlier, it will, it, your money will grab wings and be long gone. Alec reminded me of that. Life could change in 24 hours. So it's also a heavy message to keep God as the source of our life. Why do we tithe? Because everything I have belongs to God. Everything I have belongs to God. Blessed are the people who trust in the Lord and have made their Lord their hope and their confidence. They are like trees planted along a riverbank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat. It doesn't matter what's going on in the economy. It doesn't matter what's going on in California. It doesn't matter what's going on in the United States of America. My trust is in God. So when these dark times come, the Lord's going to take care of me. The Lord's going to take care of you. Such trees are not bothered by the heat. They're not worried by the long months of drought. 
Who's not worried? People who have put their trust in God. Their leaves stay green. And they never, and they never, and you will never, for those who put their trust in the Lord, and they will never stop producing fruit. Those who put their trust in the Lord will not, they will never get to the point where they're not producing fruit. That word blessed means happy. Happy are those who trust in God. That word blessed means supremely blessed, fortunate, to have special favor on them. Thank you, Lord, for special favor as I trust in you. Lord, help us today to trust in you. Help us to trust in you no matter what. If we have little, we're kind of struggling, God. Help us not to forget you're the source. You're the one that provides, God. Maybe you're here, you're listening, you're kind of well off and you're okay financially with, with material stuff. But maybe you could be poor in Christ. You could be poor in spirit. You could be poor with your relationship with Jesus. Father, every head bow, every eyes closed right now as we're getting ready to close. Nobody moving around, just kind of hang out for a couple of minutes. We're done. We've been ending yeah, a little bit early. Every head bow, every eyes closed. I want you to think about this sermon, this teaching for a minute that James is really ministering to us. As he wrote this portion in James chapter 1. Who is your source right now? Who is your source? Maybe you're here and you're just stressed out. You're saying, man, I can't do this anymore. I tried it on my own. This doesn't work. Trying to fix my marriage by myself, that doesn't doesn't work. I need God in the middle of our marriage. Trying to raise kids on my own. Man, I can't figure it out. I need God to be the source. I need wisdom how to raise my kids. My finances are struggling. Goes up and down. Can't even save a dollar. What is going on? And the Lord is saying, just release everything to me. Release your business, your business owner. Release your business to God. All your money, everything, it belongs to God. With every head by every eyes closed, Jesus, talking about a source, he is the source of our salvation. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. If you're in this auditorium today, you're watching this online, and you're saying, you know what? I need God today. I need God to intervene in my life. I need to surrender to God. I'm not right with him. I need him in my life. I'm missing that joy and that excitement. I'm missing that peace. That's God. He's a source of these. He's the only one that can provide that. It's God. Going to heaven. He's the source. You got to go through Jesus. He's the source. Well, pastor, I just thought everybody goes to heaven. No, there's a heaven, there's a hell. Now, everybody looking up here for a second if you can. There's a heaven and there's a hell. Who goes to hell? All those who don't receive Jesus as their savior, all those who deny Christ, those are the people who go to hell. They say, Pastor, I, I don't know. I, I don't even believe in hell. I understand that. See, hell wasn't really created for you and I, for human beings. Hell was created for Lucifer and his fallen angels. That was original temper. It was for Lucifer and his fallen angels. You know what was created for me and you? Heaven was created for me and you. That's why Jesus came. He died on the cross. Sir, you and I could be forgiven of our sins. So you and I could have eternal life with God. So at this moment, I want everyone to stand up. Nobody leaving at this time. It could just cause a lot of distraction. Just hang out. We have a few altar workers moving. Some of our worship leaders are moving right now. Now here it goes. If you're saying, Pastor, you know what? Man. 
I want God to be the source of everything. In my heart, my mind, my decisions. I need freedom. I, I want God to be my ultimate. So I'm done. I'm done. I want to surrender. I'm done trying to figure it out. I'm done trying to do it on my own. If you want to be forgiven of your sins, I'm going to ask you to slip your hand up when I count to three. If you want to make Jesus the Lord of your life, when I count to three, you're going to lift your hands. You may say, Pastor, if I, if I die today, let's, let's say you died today. Where are you going? I said, man, you made, it, you made it real now, Pastor. What are you doing? No, don't, don't scare me. You guys, the Bible says tomorrow is not promised to us. We're like vapor. The Bible describes it. We're here for one second. We're gone the next. Here one second. We're gone the next. So if you were to die today, where are you going? Have you made Jesus the Lord of your life? Well, Pastor, how do I get to heaven? How do I do that? It's really simple. All you do is place your faith in Jesus. All you do, we're going to say a prayer in a minute. All you have to do is say a prayer of confession. Lord, I believe in you. Lord, I believe you died on the cross. I believe you rose again for me. And I confess you as Savior. All those who place their faith in Jesus will have eternal life. So here it goes. I'm going to count to three. Maybe here's another group. Maybe you've been running from God for a little bit. The Bible describes that as backsliding, kind of going backwards. And you're saying, man, I used to go to church. I used to be involved. Man, I've lost my passion. I've lost my fire. I'm wrapped up in this stuff and that stuff. I need to rededicate. I need to rededicate my life to God. So here it goes. I'm going to count to three. All those you're saying, man, I want to surrender to God. Man, I want to make sure if I died today, I'd go straight to heaven. Man, I need Jesus. I want to be forgiven. Or that last group, I need to come back to him. I've fallen away, and now I need to come back to him. If that is you, and I count to three all across this auditorium, you're watching this online, get ready to raise your hands. One, don't let nothing hold your hand down. This is you and God right now. This is you and eternity right now. If you need Jesus, you want to be forgiven, you want to rededicate your life to God. When I say three, raise your hands. One, two, three. Right now, raise your hands. Raise them, raise them, raise them, raise them, raise them. Can you keep them up? Can you keep them up for 30 seconds? One says, see hand there, see hand there. Can you keep them up? I see them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See hand over there, hand over there. See a couple hands in the back, yeah. Yeah, see a hand over there. Good job. See some more hands, I think, over here. Yeah, good job. I see a hand way over there. Yeah. All those who just raised your hands, I want you to come forward. Come meet me here down in the front, and I'm going to lead you in a prayer of salvation today. Come on down. And church, as they come on down, man, give them a big shout. Come. Five, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43 people. Give them a big round of applause. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, this is your day. 
This is your day. If you're watching online, we're going to say a prayer right now. You join us online. Online, what you're going to do, you're going to say this prayer. Then you're going to go to igotsaved.com. And it will help you with your walk with Christ. The ones that are up here, we're going to lead you in a prayer of salvation. Making God your everything. Surrendering everything to God. But after we get done praying, just hang out for a few. We have some workers there. They're going to exchange phone numbers and help you with your walk with God. The next step is called starting at the way. What's the next step? Starting at the way. They're going to help you sign up and get in those classes so we could get you a, become a strong believer in Christ. Now, after we're done with this prayer, if anybody needs any additional prayer, please come forward. And after we're done with this one, say, man, I, I'm going through this, I'm going through that. I just need somebody to agree with. Man, come. We'd love to pray with you guys. Every head bow, every eyes close. Every head bow, every eyes close. Yes. Maybe you're at your seat right now. You didn't come down. It's okay. Say the prayer right where you're at. If you're at your seat right now, you say, man, I should have went down there. What am I doing? It's okay. Just say it right there. Every head bow, every eyes closed. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I repent of all my sins. Jesus, come into my heart. Become my Lord and Savior. From this day forward, I place my faith in you. I am a follower. I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. I believe, Jesus, that you died on the cross for me to give me eternal life. I am saved. I'm on my way to heaven. Jesus set me free of all my bad habits, all my addictions. Holy Spirit, fill me. Today, Jesus, you become my source. I trust in you with my whole life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Give God a big round of applause. All these people up here. If you need prayer, come on down. We'd love to pray with you. You guys, let Jesus, don't forget who your source is. If you need prayer, come on down. Wednesday night revival, 7 o'clock. If God is for you, who could come against you? Have a great week. We'll see you guys back Wednesday, 7 o'clock. If you need prayer, yeah. Come on down. I want to pray with you guys.